get our meeting started. I'm waiting for the chair. <laughs> no, the communication board. Come on, chair. Oh, gotcha. I thought you were serious. All right. <laughs> funny woman. Funny, funny woman. All right. Let's get to our agenda. This is now the 3 o'clock meeting, Thursday, May 21st, regular implementation board meeting. And item number one. No, we have, um, excuse me, report from the chair. I have uh, nothing to, to say there. Report from the public advisory. Walt. Thank you. There's, there's Walt. Nothing, nothing to share? Nothing to share. No? All right. You must be running a heck of a meeting. Right, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. That's awesome. Ab absolutely. Uh, public comments. We now have the opportunity for anyone wishing to speak about anything not on today's agenda. Does anybody wish to talk about anything not on today's agenda? Seeing none. We move on to item number one, which is uh, the participating special entity agreement with Gavilan. There you go. Joint Community College District for the Gavilan College Coyote Valley Campus Phase 1 Project. Edmund, you're yes. making the report. Please yes, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Chairperson Wasserman. Um, so the recommended action is adopt a resolution uh, of the CEQA findings of the final EIR report dated August 2008 and the addendum to the final environmental impact report dated January 2015 prepared by the Gavilan Joint Community College District for the Gavilan College Coyote Campus project phase one at, uh, well the whole project as as uh, completed in compliance with CEQA, reflects the Habitat Agent's independent judgment and analysis and includes the adoption of mitigation, monitoring, and reporting program. The environmental impacts of the Gavilan College Campus Phase One project were addressed by the final EIR and the addendum to the final impact report approved <coughs> by the Gavilan Joint Community College District. And the other action is adopt a resolution making positive findings and approving uh, a PSE agreement with the Gavilan Joint Community College District for the Gavilan College Coyote Valley Campus Phase 1 project. And uh, initially in October of last year, we rejected the Gavilan application because of they were going to impact 12% of the total take allocated for the plan related to seasonal wetlands. So we have a very low cap for seasonal wetlands, 15 acres for 50 years. And this one project, a PSE project, was going to take 12% of that. So, so we initially uh, denied their application because of that. There were a couple other issues also that we uh, were uncomfortable with in meeting the conditions of the plan. And um, they amended their CEQA document to address our concerns and address the, seg the, the segmenting concerns we had. We wanted them to address the entire project, not just one individual phase. And Gavilan met all the conditions of the project, conditions one uh, of the plan, excuse me, conditions 1, 3, 10, 12, 15, and 17 of the plan were met. So they, they have followed sort of the spirit of the PSE process and we are now here before you to recommend approval. Thank you. I'm going to have you hold it down. Thank you. I'm going to take a, just a quick break if we may. It seemed like we had all been together the last couple of hours, but um, Member Constantine, thank you very much. Could you take a roll call, please? We'll just get that officially in there. Board members, the Roman Yos. Tucker? Here. Constantine? Here. Little? Herrera? Here. Rogers? Here. Courtney? Wasserman? Here. Santos? Yep. Lazat? Here. Kalman? Here. And we have a quorum. Thank you. Please continue. Yes. So um, 
It's uh, their project is now consistent with the PSE process, and the it it is not would not <laughs> negatively affect uh, the agency or the co permittee's ability to implement the conservation goals and objectives of the plan. Um, the total mitigation fees that will be paid on the project are $121,456.80. The land cover fees are $113,337.60. Nitrogen deposition is $8,119.20. And there's a PSE uh, charge of uh, an additional $12,000. Um, $145.68 and there'll be full cost recovery on uh, staff time that was um, put into processing their ap application. Wonderful, thank you very much. And um, before we look to board members for any comments, suggestions, motions, questions, etc., anyone from the public wish to speak on this item? See, yes. Mr. Harris. Good afternoon, board members. My name is Fred Harris. I'm the Vice President for Administrative Services at Gavlin Joint Community College District, or Gavlin College, and I very much appreciate the opportunity to be here before you and support the, the staff recommendation, and we're very much interested in uh, writing a check for you and moving forward with our project. So thank you for the consideration. Thank you very much. All right, any uh, comments, questions of staff, motions to be made? Yes, Member Lazat. Excuse me, Chair. I think yes. we have one more public speaker. We do. Hello there. Good afternoon. Sorry, I didn't see you come up. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the Im Implementation Board. I'm Andrea McKenzie, the General Manager of the Santa Clara Valley Open Space Authority. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today. Um, my reason for uh, speaking on this item today is I just wanted to inform the Implementation Board that the Open Space Authority has been meeting recently with Gavilan College, including uh, Fred Harris, uh, we've had some very productive and cordial meetings, and the purpose of those meetings was to evaluate whether it might be possible for this community college campus to be located at a different facility, um, given the interest here is for public law enforcement and there's opportunities for collaboration in the region. Um, we fully understand that Gavilan College has a bird in the hand. They have a property, they have a plan, they've been working and investing in this project for a number of years. And so there's nothing that we have to say today that objects to that, but we're gonna continue our conversations with the college um, about the potential for relocation to another site. Um, my understanding today also is that um, the PSE agreement is for phase one only, but since the executive officer did bring up that uh, they looked at the entire project, which, which includes phase two, um, when you look at the site plan, which is phase two, uh, we just wanted to go on the record that the Open Space Authority Board uh, would be interested in working with Gavilan College and the Valley Habitat Agency on the improvements uh, to phase two. So in other words, instead of ball fields and other improvements, we'd be willing to partner with Gavilan College and the Valley Habitat Agency on keeping that residual open space that you see there um, in natural habitat rather than improved improvements. And we think that would be an improved project for that location. So with that, thank you very much. Thank you. And any other speakers? Seeing none, we'll close the public speaking portion. And I'll look to board members again for any questions. Member Lazat. Got a hold. There we go. There we go. So, um, Ed, I'm look on page nine of the um, the staff report. Yes, page nine. Okay, page nine. Yeah, it's uh, six point one point one. Six point one point one. Very bottom of the page. Now, it could be uh, the way it was copied for us. Did, gotcha. did you find where I am? No. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe if you could get the, the report that we have, the staff report from you, the memo. That's the page nine that I'm looking at. Yeah. It's the second page nine in our folders. Everyone. Yeah, it's, um, I'm sorry, it is the second page nine. It's, exhibit yeah, it's in the a, resolution. The, the participating special entity agreement. Sorry about that. Ninth page of the resolution. Ninth page. 
page of the resolution? Yeah, it's the PSE agreement, page nine. Page, oh, okay. Yeah, sorry about that. Oh, well, that's okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so the last sentence says the agency, us, uh, is a CEQA responsible agent for purposes of the project and as such will rely on the implementation of mitigation and standard measures prepared by Gavilan College for purposes of fulfilling its responsibilities under CEQA, which is the mitigation and I assume monitoring. So when, when it says rely on, on them, I, I, it's, it's a little loosey-goosey for me. So who's really going to be in charge the lead agency or the responsible agency with regard to making sure that the mitigations and the monitoring actually happens because that's where things fall off the table. Yeah, uh, the lead agent in this case. Would be Gavilan. Yes, okay. correct. All right, so we have, so that's what, what it means when it says we'll rely on them implementing? Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right, all right. Um, and then over on, I think it's that, on attachment, Two after page seventeen after page eighteen of that same document is attachment two conditions of approval. Yes. And if you go through there, and then you get to sort of a uh, attachment one to that, which is aquatic avoidance and minimization measures, and it's kind of a two chart. Yes. Okay. So I'm over on the one two the third page of that. Third and page. It's, it's, okay. It's so number fifteen. Three of uh, 16, or page. So it's item 15 and that. Oh, item 15. Item 15. Got it, yes. Okay, and so my concern is that you've got all of these things that are avoidance and minimization measures, and yet it says, applies to the project, no. And the response is that no aquatic resources providing potential habitat will be impacted by the project. That to me is a, a conclusion based on the project not having been done. And particularly, you know, some of these things that, that are required to be done, relocating native fish that, you know, that, that may appear. Um, and so for this box to be marked no, I would think that item 15 applies to the project, but it's anticipated that none will be impact. So re, uh, restating that um, as a um, as as you stated it, where right. yes, so, so that fifteen would would instead of the box being marked no, it should be marked yes. Okay. And then the response is that um, that no no we don't anticipate basically is what it's saying will be yes. impacted, but yes. you don't know that until you start moving dirt. Correct. Or you to get in there. So yeah. That's why I think it should say yes. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's all the questions I have. Okay. And I don't see any objection. I see some nods I, of I the heads to that. Yes, please. I have a question about, so the CEQA document covers all the phases, phase one and phase two. Correct. The ps &E agreement covers phase one. This, uh, this particular um, agreement is phase one, but they amended their CEQA document to avoid all impacts to wetlands. So therefore, future phases will not affect the seasonal wetlands. And they're working with, from, from what I understand, they're working with the U.S. Army Corps to have some of those uh, features uh, sort of de-delineated, if there's such a word. So the wetlands that are currently out there, there's question whether they're even wetlands. Uh, and there's a Rick Hopkins is here from Live Oak, if, who could probably explain a little bit more about uh, the wetland delineation. But, the, but from, from what I've been told is that the, the, the later, well, the document was amended for they'll avoid all impacts to seasonal wetlands. So, so if phase two ever comes in and there's a question that it, it, it might not, but if it does, they they are avoiding all impacts to the seasonal wetlands, and the only waters of the U.S. impact is a small culvert crossing. Under so, phase two. Under phase two. And phase two would come to the board. Exactly. Separate action. Separate action. Any, yes. Obviously, but I just want to be clear because I know phase two, I've heard, can be a little is a little controversial, perhaps for some, 
Yes. Okay. Correct. Okay. Yes. Thanks. You're welcome. Any other comments? Anyone wishing to make a motion? Seeing none, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll move Tucker. to approve. Thank you. I'll, thank you. We have a motion to approve and we have a second. Looking for any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Excuse me. Whoop, we, oh, what? Right there before the hammer came down. <laughs> so, question for council. Since this is a resolution regarding CEQA, do we need, not need a roll call? No, it doesn't need a roll call. Specific findings? You, you, you're saying we don't? That's well, well, we don't need a roll call. I mean, roll call vote. No. no. Okay. There's no requirement for a roll call vote. Okay. I mean, we'll figure out if everybody okay. doesn't vote the same way, but we okay. don't have to go through the roll call. Okay. All right. So, seeing no further discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? None. That passes unanimously. Thank you very much. That was item number one. We now move on to item number two, which is the review draft of the 2015-16 uh, Habitat Agency budget. And let me just switch over to two. And Mr. Sullivan, I'm just guessing you're going to make this report. Yes, I was there just. There you go. Yes. So basically, I didn't know that the. I, I was pleased to see as many implementation board members at the workshop uh, today. I that. Very responsible yes, group. I was like, this is fantastic. <laughs> yes. So this this was just for uh, information item only for the board members who wouldn't have been able to attend the workshop. And since okay. it was unanimous that you all were there, <laughs> it was just to provide a copy of this as a courtesy. And if an implementation board member wanted to contact me or send an email to me about comments about the budget. So it's... Um, so since you were all there, I, I think I think we're good. Good. I, I agree with you. And seeing anyone from the public wishing to speak to this item, I do have a Mr. Card. Muirhead. Yes. Thank you, Chair, and uh, good afternoon, board members and staff. For the record, my name is Doug Muirhead. I live in Morgan Hill. Uh, I just attended your informative budget workshop. Um, over the last couple of weeks, I've uh, attended budget workshops and open houses from VTA, uh, from the Water District, and from the county. Since I see representatives of all three here, let me say they were all excellent. <laughs> <laughs> this is the that's smooth. <laughs> I'm learning. You are. You are. Um, this is the only agency that chose not to make a draft budget available in advance of the budget hearings. I've said before, but I'm going to say it again. This agency can have a philosophy of what is it reasonable to do to inform the public, or it can have an attitude of what is the legal minimum, and we're going to find that that's acceptable. I, I prefer the former, not the latter. Um, I would encourage you to encourage the agency to work towards the former and not the latter. Um, but. You know, they're doing good work, and there was a lot of good information there. I just am not the kind of person that thinks quickly. I like a little time to think and read and write and research. Um, so I hope you'll allow that approach uh, some room to breathe. Thank you. Thank you. I think your comments have been heard by the board members, and I'm seeing numerous nodding, and I think our executive director's seen the nodding as well, and I, I think you have consensus direction to uh, make that so. Yes. Thing on. You press and hold it, press and, hold. and then release. Is it working? Um, no, I, I think it's really important. And, and this budget, before we vote on it, um, it it's going to it's going to be prepared. Some comments that were made and changes will be added, oh. and it's going to be released publicly. So uh, your your comments definitely uh, were heard. And if I could just comment, please. Um, unlike most other agencies, this agency has two boards, and it's really the governing board that enacts and adopts the budget. Uh, the implementation board provides input. Uh, one of the reasons for having the workshop was so that the executive officer could get your input and take that and refine it um, before he proceeded to the governing board. So uh, this situation is a little bit different 
from the other agencies and um, certainly between now and the time that the matter comes before the governing board there will be ample uh, dissemination of the budget material and information but it really did seem to be premature to release it prior to the workshop which is not really a public hearing it's a workshop um, for the purposes of getting the input thank you I appreciate that and mr. Sullivan I think the point you're hearing is we want to, of course be as transparent as possible and give as much advance notice as possible whenever possible and um, we, we talked about the website we talked about a Facebook page we talked about some other things so just please bear that in mind you've got consensus yes. with that direction thank you that concludes item number two unless there's any other comments on two we move to item three and uh, mr. Sullivan your report yes thank you thank you chairman um, so you you have the notes before you on the on the EO report and very successful meeting in Washington uh, did not meet our representatives but I met with the staff of, of uh, Feinstein and Boxer as well as Lofgren Honda and Eshoo um, as well as senior agency staff and the thing we pushed with all of them was we're in a partnership with the federal government on this and and that partnership includes funding and that is what our message was uh, I also met with US Army Corps um, senior staff to talk about our RGP plight and that was also very successful and the um, both uh, Chris Mitchell was fantastic in setting up the meetings with Lofgren, Honda, and SU staff. And I want to thank the county for providing his services to the agency because without that, I would I would be worse than Mr. Smith going to Washington. I wouldn't even know where to begin. So um, the meetings with Boxer and Feinstein were set up by uh, John Hopkins and, and his team which were the California Conservation Partnership Group. And I was there with representatives from Southern California and Northern California to lobby for uh, more funding and uh, more look at how these are an important conservation tool. Um, with the RGP update, I met with uh, the San Francisco District Office established a schedule, as I mentioned in the workshop, uh, to towards a regional general permit issuance by November which we deem unacceptable given that we're in we're three years into this uh, we've initiated a congressional inquiry concerning the RGP issuance delay and I and Chris Mitchell and prime policy group were instrumental in, in getting uh, and the letter is a that went out on May 13th is attached that was sent to Major General Peabody and you, and as you can see it was signed by the four uh, Congress persons from uh, our region um, met with the South Pacific Division staff the same day uh, that the letter congressional letter went out and I have a meeting with San Francisco district staff uh, next Friday it'll be interesting what sort of reception we get given that they're now been approached by the Washington headquarters and South Pacific Division staff saying what's going on here so I'm, I'm very curious how the South Branch staff is going to greet us <laughs> um, and I, I guess Major General Peabody has uh, expressed his concerns with the San Francisco District Office in, in the past so he was the right person to send the letter to so the PSE update is uh, Caltrans there's a, some Caltrans projects will be coming next year one for wetland restoration and, and a small road maintenance project those uh, those projects were not included in in our budget projections because we really don't know much about them but that's one that Caltrans will be using the PSE process um, Heckard Pass is a mitigation only project that we'll be doing an agreement with them next year for um, Gavlin College is another one it's a small Gilroy campus um, application they're doing some additional expansion work out there there's PG&E pipelines this is a 
it, sort of in response to the uh, San Bruno explosion, they're testing all their pipelines and they need to uh, take coverage uh, for digging trenches, including near Anderson Dam is one of the areas on uh, some private land that their pipeline runs through. So there's uh, one of the challenges is uh, with the Coyote uh, Cianothus plant, the, the plan is pretty strict on take of the plant before they're only proposing to take 10 to 30 plants and we're hoping we can work out some sort of a, a, a arrangement for them because it does not affect the occurrence of that population and we're hoping to work out something with the wildlife agencies to process their application um, but if the wildlife agencies are not comfortable it's the same problem that water districts facing you know the, the need to acquire an occurrence of uh, coyote theonosis before there is a, a take of an occurrence. Um, the PG&E project is uh, uh, similar to Hecker Pass. It's mitigation only for bay checker spot butterfly and red-legged frog. They would be utilizing the plan to, uh, so we, we would acquire acres for, and, and they would pay endowment and management costs, but we'd acquired acres on their behalf and uh, so if we acquired a thousand acre parcel, a certain percentage, like somewhere between 13 and 26 acres would be set aside for their mitigation. And they would, we'd reach an agreement on how we'd manage that land long term for them. Uh, there's a Los Gatos Creek project. Uh, this is the, in the city of San Jose, the Federal Highway Administration and Caltrain is, um, has a, a project that's in the queue right now and it's primarily uh, wetland impacts that they're uh, uh, riparian impacts I should say um, then there's a couple of OSA projects their restoration projects that require take permits um, the impacts are minimal at, at, at two of their properties then with land enrollment um, I mentioned the UTC Coyote Ridge at the last board meeting. It's our top priority for enrollment. Um, we um, we have vision, uh, the conservation easement agreement uh, agreed to by OSA and Habitat Agency will be uh, hopefully finished in July of 2015. Uh, it would go to the OSA board for approval later that month and it would come to uh, the implementation board in September for approval with the land being in, um, enrolled um, in the reserve system and the conservation easement being recorded um, close of escrow after close, close of escrow in December of this year. Calero Park um, site is proposed for enrollment in reserve system first quarter 2016 pending um, Board of Supervisor approval, Santa Clara County Board of Supes, and Implementation Board approval. OSA Coyote Valley uh, site is proposed for enrollment and reserve system either the second or third quarter of 2016, pending OSA uh, board approval and Implementation Board approval. Uh, we're collaborating with PG&E on acquiring properties. They they have the need like some this is probably one of the ways we'll be able to buy some of those super expensive properties because they need take coverage for uh, impacts pre pre mitigation for red legged frog um, butterfly uh, tiger salamander etc cetera, etc cetera. so there's an opportunity if we acquire a 3,000 acre parcel they could you know buy let's say part of that and help us close the deal uh, discussions with private landowners continue. We've gotten some uh, interested parties, uh, uh, two of which, which I'll be discussing in closed session. Uh, Habitat Agency will be submitting a Section 6 grant, and the application is due October, November, sometime that time frame, for those um, uh, private lands we hope to acquire. Reserve land management monitoring plan for reserve system lands is in progress. Uh, working with the city of San Jose and a management agreement for their uh, regional wastewater facility for burrowing owl lands. We've been meeting with the environmental services group uh, to do something exactly like we did at Down Edwards. Initiating three RFQ processes for on-call consultant services. 
Um, we released an RFP for the wetland restoration design. Uh, tomorrow the RFP is due and will be coming to the board in July uh, to approve a contract for consulting services to do the restoration work at Calero. Uh, the draft, we have a draft of the public lands and loop policy. It's, um, I'm expecting it to be complete soon. It's got to go through the, 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 our internal process of approval with the co-permittees and, and the TAC. And so after that, we'll, we'll be bringing it here for approval. Um, in the final stages of, of the conditions implementation guide, and this, and this was a document that uh, the co-permittees were very instrumental in creating, and uh, Rob Eastwood at the county took the lead on it, and, and we're really close to finishing it. And uh, given the workload of the co-permittees now because of the, you know, the, the economy and the planning departments being uh, sort of at capacity, we're, we're going to uh, take the ball and finish the document. And, but the co-permittees, this was a co-permittee creation. They did a great job on it. Um, and we will begin a recruitment process for a senior staff position in June. And uh, Black Mountain Financial Accounting and Tracking System integration will be completed in August and um, that's it thank you for that report I think I am on any questions yes sir thank you Ed for a very uh, comprehensive report you have a lot of activities going on so I've got a couple of questions for you one in particular uh, the process for hiring a senior staff position have you thought about or contemplating the division of responsibilities that individual would, would take up from you or be able to help assist in? Yes. Can you provide just a little bit of background yes. what you're what you're looking for? Yes. So that that person would become the lead for the restoration uh, work group, even though that's fun to be involved with. It's it's time I can't really dedicate to it. Uh, they would be the lead for the land enrollment process. They, they might be the initial point of contract, contact with, with landowners who are interested in, uh, in um, potentially uh, selling us their land. Uh, I have a good way with uh, landowners, so I still feel I need to be involved with that. But the person I, that I envision hiring is going to be somebody who understands diplomacy and good communication skills. So somebody who, who you know, also has some sort of planning background. So they would be working with the implementation committee instead of me. They would, they would do the agendas for the implementation committee and the TAC. Um, I, I may not attend as many TAC meetings. Uh, they would also uh, take over the PSE process. Right now it's difficult. We got um, ICF who does a good job, but they're, they're out of uh, San Francisco and Sacramento and I need somebody to understand government processes and understand CEQA and how it fits in with sort of like a development process that all the local planning agencies do. So I want someone I can really trust and take that over. They, they would also support me and, and if, you know, the concern was if something happened to me, so I want somebody to, who understands the plan and if, 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 if I leave or something happens to me that that they could step in on an interim basis and, and, and run the agency in my absence and certainly back up for vacation and those sort of things. <laughs> so that's, that's just sort of tentatively what, oh, what, what I've been thinking. And, and there might be other tasks uh, that come up too. Because uh, on, on, a, on a separate note, I, I see one, one task that you, uh, you brought to light was that you're in, the, you're in the final states of completing the conditions of implementation guy for, for covered activities. And obviously, yep. that was a co-permittee uh, driven document. But as you say, uh, there's going to be, you know, th that's, it's going to be a new way of how to look at how we conduct our business at the co-permittee level mm -hmm. for all the different jurisdictions. Uh, do you have a sense of a timeline where you plan on bringing that to the implementation board so that we can have a full understanding of how that's going to impact uh, the day-to-day -day lives when we're not wearing our our HCA hats. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I would like to get it to the implementation board either in July or September. Yeah. And I've told ICF it's a high priority to finish it. Uh, the co-permittees did as much as they could. Rob did a great job, but he, it's at a point where 
he doesn't have the time to deal with it any longer. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you. Any other questions regarding the executive director's report? Seeing none, and Ms. Armento, please correct me if I state this incorrectly. Um, we are now going to move into closed session. We're not adjourning here. We're gonna, now going to go into closed session. And when closed session is completed, we will come back out here to report on closed session and then adjourn the meeting. Thank you. With that, any other comments, anyone? Nope. Why don't we move into the room next door? Dead under closed well, We haven't been for... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, should we start this meeting at three? The yes.